英語聞き流し10分間、名作リスニング、英語テキストと MP3 ダウンロード、その他の物語は、ホームページよりご利用いただけます。88thpp.com、88thpp.com。And it seemed to Beauty, now she understood him better, that when she said, No, beast, he went away quite sad. But her happy dreams of the handsome young prince soon made her forget the poor beast, and the only thing that at all disturbed her was to be constantly told to distrust appearances, to let her heart guide her, and not her eyes, and many other equally perplexing things, which, consider as she would, she could not understand. So everything went on for a long time, until at last, happy as she was, Beauty began to long for the sight of her father and her brothers and sisters, and one night, seeing her look very sad, the beast asked her what was the matter. Beauty had quite ceased to be afraid of him. Now she knew that he was really gentle in spite of his ferocious looks and his dreadful voice. So she answered that she was longing to see her home once more. Upon hearing this, the beast seemed sadly distressed and cried miserably. Ah! Beauty, have you the heart to desert an unhappy beast like this? What more do you want to make you happy? Is it because you hate me that you want to escape? No, dear beast, answered Beauty softly, I do not hate you, and I should be very sorry never to see you any more, but I long to see my father again. Only let me go for two months, and I promise to come back to you and stay for the rest of my life. The beast, who had been sighing dolefully while she spoke, now replied, I cannot refuse you anything you ask, even though it should cost me my life. Take the four boxes you will find in the room next to your own, and fill them with everything you wish to take with you. But remember your promise and come back when the two months are over, or you may have cause to repent it, for if you do not come in good time, you will find your faithful beast dead. You will not need any chariot to bring you back. Only say goodbye to all your brothers and sisters the night before you come away, and when you have gone to bed, turn this ring round upon your finger and say firmly, I wish to go back to my palace and see my beast again. Good night, beauty. Fear nothing, sleep peacefully, and before long you shall see your father once more. As soon as Beauty was alone, she hastened to fill the boxes with all the rare and precious things she saw about her, and only when she was tired of heaping things into them did they seem to be full. Then she went to bed, but could hardly sleep for joy. And when at last she did begin to dream of her beloved prince, she was grieved to see him stretched upon a grassy bank, sad and weary, and hardly like himself. What is the matter? she cried. He looked at her reproachfully, and said, How can you ask me, cruel one? Are you not leaving me to my death, perhaps? Ah! Don't be so sorrowful, cried Beauty. I am only going to assure my father that I am safe and happy. I have promised the beast faithfully that I will come back, and he would die of grief if I did not keep my word. What would that matter to you? said the prince, surely you would not care? Indeed, I should be ungrateful if I did not care for such a kind beast, cried Beauty indignantly. I would die to save him from pain. I assure you it is not his fault that he is so ugly. Just then a strange sound woke her, someone was speaking not very far away, and opening her eyes, she found herself in a room she had never seen before, which was certainly not nearly so splendid as those she was used to in the beast's palace. Where could she be? She got up and dressed hastily, and then saw that the boxes she had packed the night before were all in the room. While she was wondering by what magic the beast had transported them and herself to this strange place, she suddenly heard her father's voice, and rushed out and greeted him joyfully. Her brothers and sisters were all astonished at her appearance, as they had never expected to see her again, and there was no end to the questions they asked her. She had also much to hear about what had happened to them while she was away, and of her father's journey home. But when they heard that she had only come to be with them for a short time, and then must go back to the beast's palace forever, they lamented loudly. Then Beauty asked her father what he thought could be the meaning of her strange dreams, and why the prince constantly begged her not to trust to appearances. After much consideration, he answered, You tell me yourself that the beast, frightful as he is, loves you dearly and deserves your love and gratitude for his gentleness and kindness. I think the prince must mean you to understand that you ought to reward him by doing as he wishes you to, in spite of his ugliness. Beauty could not help seeing that this seemed very probable. Still, when she thought of her dear prince who was so handsome, she did not feel at all inclined to marry the beast. At any rate, for two months she need not decide, but could enjoy herself with her sisters. But though they were rich now, and lived in town again, And had plenty of acquaintances, Beauty found that nothing amused her very much, and she often thought of the palace, where she was so happy, especially as at home she never once dreamed of her dear prince, and she felt quite sad without him. Then her sisters seemed to have got quite used to being without her, 
and even found her rather in the way, so she would not have been sorry when the two months were over but for her father and brothers, who begged her to stay, and seemed so grieved at the thought of her departure that she had not the courage to say goodbye to them. Every day when she got up she meant to say it at night, and when night came she put it off again, until at last she had a dismal dream which helped her to make up her mind. She thought she was wandering in a lonely path in the palace gardens, when she heard groans which seemed to come from some bushes hiding the entrance of a cave, and running quickly to see what could be the matter, she found the beast stretched out upon his side, apparently dying. He reproached her faintly with being the cause of his distress, and at the same moment a stately lady appeared, and said very gravely. Ah! Beauty, you are only just in time to save his life. See what happens when people do not keep their promises. If you had delayed one day more, you would have found him dead. Beauty was so terrified by this dream that the next morning she announced her intention of going back at once, and that very night she said goodbye to her father and all her brothers and sisters, and as soon as she was in bed she turned her ring round upon her finger, and said firmly, I wish to go back to my palace and see my beast again, as she had been told to do. Then she fell asleep instantly, and only woke up to hear the clock saying beauty, beauty twelve times in its musical voice, which told her at once that she was really in the palace once more. Everything was just as before, and her birds were so glad to see her. But Beauty thought she had never known such a long day, for she was so anxious to see the beast again that she felt as if supper time would never come. But when it did come and no beast appeared she was really frightened, so, after listening and waiting for a long time, she ran down into the garden to search for him. Up and down the paths and avenues ran poor Beauty, calling him in vain, for no one answered, and not a trace of him could she find, until at last, quite tired, she stopped for a minute's rest, and saw that she was standing opposite the shady path she had seen in her dream. She rushed down it, and, sure enough, there was the cave, and in it lay the beast, asleep, as Beauty thought. Quite glad to have found him, she ran up and stroked his head, but, through horror, he did not move or open his eyes. Oh! He is dead, and it is all my fault, said Beauty, crying bitterly. But then, looking at him again, she fancied he still breathed, and, hastily fetching some water from the nearest fountain, she sprinkled it over his face, and, to her great delight, he began to revive. Oh! Beast, how you frighten me, she cried. I never knew how much I loved you until just now, when I feared I was too late to save your life. Can you really love such an ugly creature as I am? said the beast faintly. Ah! Beauty, you only came just in time. I was dying because I thought you had forgotten your promise. But go back now and rest, I shall see you again by and by. Beauty, who had half expected that he would be angry with her, was reassured by his gentle voice, and went back to the palace, where supper was awaiting her, and afterward the beast came in as usual, and talked about the time she had spent with her father, asking if she had enjoyed herself, and if they had all been very glad to see her. Beauty answered politely, and quite enjoyed telling him all that had happened to her. And when at last the time came for him to go, and he asked, as he had so often asked before, Beauty, will you marry me? She answered softly, Yes, dear beast. As she spoke a blaze of light sprang up before the windows of the palace, fireworks crackled and guns banged, and across the avenue of orange trees, in letters all made of fireflies, was written, Long live the prince and his bride. Turning to ask the beast what it could all mean, Beauty found that he had disappeared, and in his place stood her long-loved prince. At the same moment the wheels of a chariot were heard upon the terrace, and two ladies entered the room. One of them Beauty recognized as the stately lady she had seen in her dreams, the other was also so grand and queenly that Beauty hardly knew which to greet first. But the one she already knew said to her companion, Well, Queen, this is Beauty, who has had the courage to rescue your son from the terrible enchantment. They love one another, and only your consent to their marriage is wanting to make them perfectly happy. I consent with all my heart, cried the Queen. How can I ever thank you enough, charming girl, for having restored my dear son to his natural form? And then she tenderly embraced Beauty and the Prince, who had meanwhile been greeting the fairy and receiving her congratulations. Now, said the fairy to Beauty, I suppose you would like me to send for all your brothers and sisters to dance at your wedding? And so she did, and the marriage was celebrated the very next day with the utmost splendor, and Beauty and the Prince lived happily ever after. 英語聞き流し10分間名作リスニング英語テキストと MP3 ダウンロードその他の物語はホームページよりご利用いただけます 88thpp.com 88thpp.com